What might seem surprising is the rate of domestic violence and suicide among America's police officers. It's high. Almost three times as high in police officer families than in families without an officer. But as new specialist Alex Cabrero explains, help is out there. It's just a matter of asking for it. And that's the tough part, Dean. You know, among law enforcement officers, sometimes there's a sense that asking for help goes against some sort of a macho code, or if that you talk about problems, it could be seen as a sign of weakness. But after what we saw here today, asking for help is obviously the better way to go. There is no reason, no excuse, no explanation to try and make sense of any of this. But maybe, just maybe, the next one can be stopped before it gets to this. Sometimes we as society expect them to be robotic and we forget they're human. Brian Robertson is a retired police chaplain, spent more than 20 years talking to Salt Lake City police officers and county sheriff's deputies. He's not trying to deflect blame from the officer who did this. He's just saying, unfortunately and daily, many officers have a tough time going from on duty to off duty. Park that car, lock it up, throw the keys somewhere where they can find them the next day or when they go on shift, lock their weapons in the safe place, put their uniform out of sight, put on some civilian clothes, go to the gym, go shopping with their wife. Unfortunately, many officers don't do that or don't know how to do that. According to the National Center for Women and Policing, 40% of police officer families experience domestic violence. That number is 10% for families not involved in police work. In another study, there is a 24% domestic violence rate in older and experienced officers, which is two to four times more common among police families. Robertson says those numbers are similar with officer suicide numbers. They are higher. I would say, unfortunately, maybe three out of five officers will end up in the termination of their marriage or a divorce. Even though he's retired, Robertson says he still talks to some officers, and often it's not just to say hi. There's been a couple times I've been with officers, and I would never mention names, but they've, the car's been wet from tears, and I've cried a lot along with them because I could feel their hurt. Now, here are a couple of numbers where someone can get help to talk about that hurt. The first number is the National Suicide Prevention Hotline, the number 1-800-273-8255. The second number is the Utah Domestic Violence Hotline, and their number is 1-800-897-5465. Again, if you or someone you know just needs someone to talk to, those are the phone numbers you can contact. But the first step, Dave and Dini, is to talk to someone. Do something and get some help if it's needed. Absolutely. Alex, those numbers are eye-opening. Thanks. Well, many